Hello there you beautiful people, my name is Willow and welcome to my first Starfield Challenge run. My last run in Skyrim with only unarmed damage was brutal, so today we're gonna take on something calmer while we find out if I can beat Starfield's very hard difficulty with only pistols. Before we get into the run, let's lay down some ground rules. I can only use pistols to deal damage, this includes bashing and I'm not restricted at all in starship combat. I must play the entire game on the very hard difficulty. I can't use any bugs or glitches on purpose to exploit the game, I can only use visual mods, and I cannot use console commands for anything but fixing bugs. With the rules of the run laid out, let's take a look at the challenge itself. This run is going to be a whole lot of fun as it's my first ever playthrough of Starfield and I'm excited for what awaits me in the cosmos. I write this script as I go and all of this part has been written prior to beginning the run. Normally I'd have a section here where I analyze the run, but I didn't do any research so I could avoid spoilers, so go down into the comments below and let me know if you you think I can beat this run, I'm confident I can, and with that let's jump right into the gameplay where we start as a miner going down an elevator with a woman named Lynn, who is our boss, and another co-worker named Heller. This is apparently only my second time in the mines and I'm still learning the ropes. I spend a while listening to Supervisor Lynn yell at some other miners before using a fancy laser to mine some rocks myself. After collecting a few minerals, Lynn calls for me to join her and Heller as they break through one of the cave walls. After we make our way inside a new section of mine, I'm told to go grab some artifact for a client and head up towards another cave alone. Heller is worried about some strange gravity readings, but Lynn sends me in and I shoot a laser at some rocks before finding this weird piece of metal, and when I touch it, I go into this weird abstract vision that was trippy as hell before waking up in what I assume to be the med bay of this mining operation. It's here where I get to create our beautiful character and name them before heading outside with the others to deliver the strange piece of metal I found and meet an interesting man named Barrett who is part of a group known as Constellation. I also get to meet his adorable robot companion named Vasco while he explains that Constellation is a group of explorers trying to unlock the mysteries of the universe. I tell him about my vision and then suddenly we are attacked by a group of pirates called the Crimson Fleet. I grab my first pistol from a box nearby and the challenge begins. My damage is kind of pitiful as it takes multiple reloads to kill each pirate, but overall it's not too brutal and the fighting is fun. I clean up the last of the pirates and then speak with Barret, who tells me I'm gonna take his ship back to Constellation's headquarters and deliver the artifact for him since I had a vision and he says that makes me part of this now. While I'm doing this, he's gonna stay behind with Heller and Lynn to help them clean up the mess that he caused. I then go board his ship with the cute robot who introduced introduces me to the basics of running a ship. We take off and head into space while learning the controls, which are very akin to Elite Dangerous, before we get attacked by some Crimson Fleet ships. The space combat is honestly quite good. I didn't know what to expect, but it's intuitive and yet again gives me Elite Dangerous vibes. It's a bit of a struggle because at one point it becomes two versus one, but overall I really enjoy that once I lock onto a ship, I don't have to aim, I just have to keep it in front of me. The damage system, where energy weapons deal with shields, better, while ballistic guns and missiles deal with hulls better, makes me use all of my weapons which I like. After blowing up all three of the pirate vessels, Vasco says I should go confront the Crimson Fleet leadership, so we land on a nearby planet and start a dungeon crawl where we fight through a ton of Crimson Fleet enemies. The combat is slow and steady as we deal with small groups of pirates throughout the dungeon. The enemies are kind of bullet sponges, but that's to be expected on the hardest difficulty and I run out of ammo quickly, but it's okay as I learn I can bash with the pistols, which I'm allowing. I don't end up dying throughout this dungeon as I mow through the pirates while going from cover to cover and using med packs to heal up. Also, it's here where I learn about digipicks, which is the way we lockpick and hack in this game and it's very different from other Bethesda titles titles, and I honestly love it. It's this little puzzle that makes you think quite a bit, and I even end up reloading a save after failing one because I really want to learn how it works. After cleaning out the inside of this base, I make my way outside where I speak with the leader of the Crimson Fleet and end up persuading him to stop chasing us. 
Persuasion is also a minigame where you're trying to get a certain number of points by selecting the dialogue choices you think the person you're trying to persuade wants to hear. After convincing the pirates that there isn't some grand treasure on Barrett's ship, I leave the planet and make my way over to Alpha Centauri where I land on a city called New Atlantis. I then make my way to the headquarters of the Constellation Group and after speaking with them for a while and learning more about how they explore the universe, they reveal that the artifact I found is actually actually one of many. I place it on the table along with two others that they already had, and they all start floating and attracting to each other in some sort of weird ring sphere shaped thing. I'm then made a probationary member of Constellation, and this lady named Sarah, who's the leader of Constellation, tells me that our next mission is to track down a report of another artifact. Before I accept the mission, I decide to go do some exploring in New Atlantis as my live chat told me of a pistol I can get if I speak with my parents since I took the kid stuff trait. I head over to the residential district and make my way up one of the towers until I reach an apartment where I meet my dad and oh my god, he's a freaking goblin. Look at this dude. Holy crap, it's 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 scary. It's scary to look at. Ugh. Mom looks better, but not by much, and either way, I talk to them for a while and tell them I'm in Constellation before heading back to my bedroom and grabbing my old high school backpack. I then head back to the Constellation Lodge and, oh, my parents are here already and they have a gift. My dad gives me some dusty old relic of a gun and wow, it's a 1911 and it has great damage. I then go back to the residential district to buy more ammo for the gun before speaking with Sarah to start the mission. I then head off to the mass station with her to speak with some dude in the Navy who asks me to join something called the Vanguard, which seems like space police. Either way, I decline his offer and he tells us about a Vanguard named Mora who has found something that sounds an awful lot like one of the artifacts we're looking for. Apparently he's assigned to patrol the Sol System and was born on Mars making him a Martian. We go to the Sol System and land on a city called Sidonia on Mars where I speak with a bartender who tells us that Mora has gone missing and is likely dead. I then have to persuade him to tell us where the missing Vanguard went last and I do so successfully before heading off to Venus where the game teaches me how to sneak in a spaceship. I slowly sneak up to a satellite that Mora left a message on telling us he was headed to an abandoned shipyard to find spare parts. I make my way there and dock before entering the shipyard. After doing the delightful lockpicking minigame again, I get stuck into a long combat section. The fighting here is really quite difficult as the enemies are extremely accurate and I only have so many healing supplies. It's not like Fallout where if I go into cover and peek out to take a few shots, I can usually avoid damage. In this game, when you peek your head out, you better be expecting to eat some lead. I end up spending a long time trying to tiptoe my way through and pick off enemies one at a time as I eat a ton of bullets. I do end up dying quite a few times here as I quickly ran out of healing supplies and couldn't avoid damage, but eventually through the clever tactics of dumping many, many bullets into the enemies, I managed to clear the station of spacers, which are basically scavengers, as well as the mercenary group called the Ecleptic. This combat section has really made me think that I need to prioritize getting better armor. I can't avoid damage, so my best tactic right now is to mitigate it as best I can. Either way, I find out that Mora is now at Neptune so I undock my ship and make my way out over there when suddenly the Vanguard ship starts attacking us. The fight is actually quite tense and I almost lose it as the Vanguard explains that the mercenaries have taken over the ship and Sarah says we need to knock out its engines to board. The fight goes on for a bit and even though it's close, I still come out the victor before boarding the ship and fighting through a handful of mercenaries without much issue. We then speak with the Vanguard and I offer him to come join my crew and he says to meet up with him on Sidonia later and he will consider it. He then gives us the artifact for saving his life and I return to the lodge with Sarah to add it to our collection. It jumps to life joining its other artifact friends and I then speak with Sarah once more who gives me a laundry list of missions and officially makes me a full member of Constellation. She then asks to come with us and I've decided that I'm going to allow companions in this run so I give her one of my pistols and a bunch of ammo for it before heading over to the weapons shop here in New Atlantis where I spend a while sitting in this chair and waiting for 24 hours to restock the merchant's inventory before I buy ammo from them. 
Afterwards, I take a look at all the quests Sarah gave me and decide that we should go check on Barrett first since we left him with a possible pirate problem. So I head back out to Vectera, and when I land, Sarah goes on about how Argos has washed their hands of the operation as I find Lynn standing here alone. After a short conversation with her, I find out that pirates attacked again after we left and ended up kidnapping both Heller and Barrett. I then have to go find an emergency power cell, which I use to get the power online in the community communications building so I can check if they left any messages as they were taken away. It turns out they did, and I play the recording before taking it to Lynn, who gives us the location data off the recording before joining our crew. I then assign her to my ship, The Frontier, before boarding it myself, where Sarah wants to talk to us. We then have a conversation about my vision and how she's glad she decided to take me as a partner in solving the mysteries of the artifacts. I then take off and make my way over to a nearby moon, where I find that the ship that took Heller and Barrett has crash landed. Among the rubble, I find our boy Heller high on painkillers, and the conversation with him is kind of funny as he tells us about Barrett murdering the pilot of the ship and crashing it before being kidnapped again by more pirates. I recruit Heller to my crew instead of leaving him to die here, and we quickly make our way to the pirates' headquarters using data from a recording sent to Heller by Barrett as he was kidnapped. The fighting here is rough because they have these turrets set up around the base and they are deadly accurate and take a lot of bullets to take down. I end up dying one time to the turrets before realizing I can just kill the pirates in my way and go through a door into their headquarters. So I do just that and after a long discussion with Barrett and the pirate leader, Sarah pays a ransom to get Barrett back and we all leave together returning to the lodge where we reunite with the rest of the constellation members. I then talk to him for a bit before deciding to go check out the Eye, an intelligence satellite owned by Constellation, where I meet a buff Russian guy named Vladimir who asks me to go check on one of the other Constellation agents, as well as giving me another lead for an artifact. So, wasting no time, I head to an abandoned mine to find the missing agent. I enter to find her killing a man before she points her gun at us. I identify myself and she gets sassy with me before introducing herself as Andresia. After some back and forth, Sarah and I decide to join her in in fighting through the pirates here as we look for the artifact. The combat in this section was really fun as I was able to play very aggressively. I rush down enemies and spray at them with the Kraken automatic pistol before finishing them off with the 1911. Eventually, I make my way down this massive chasm and while I fight the last group of pirates, I run into my first frustrating bug of the run. I get stuck on the terrain here and no matter what I do, I cannot manage to get out so I end up having to reload the save from entering the mine and fight through through the entire set of enemies again, blowing them away left and right in a rage-fueled massacre until I eventually reach the end of the mine. It's here where I have to shoot at a rock in order to recover the artifact, and when I wake up after the vision, Andresia tells me not to tell the others about what I saw at the entrance to the mine. I agree, and then make my way to the other artifact mentioned by Vladimir on the eye, and oh boy, the enemies guarding this artifact are really strong. I managed to get decently far on my first attempt by reusing the strategy of using the Kraken until it runs out of ammo and then switching to the 1911 to finish them off. As I reach the building with the artifact though, I get overwhelmed and end up dying before trying again and on this next attempt, I end up running past a lot more of the enemies while taking down only those in my way and fighting my way into the building one zealot at a time. I eventually clear the building and enter the mine underneath where after just barely struggling my way through two more zealots, I make Make my way through the cave and get the artifact before leaving the mine and returning to the Constellation Lodge where I add the two new artifacts to the collection, finishing off the artifacts Vladimir told us about before returning to speak with him where he tells us of a new strange reading that is similar to the artifacts and that we'll have to use our scanner to find out what's causing it when we land on the planet it's coming from. I head out to the planet and spend a while confused, not sure how to get into this massive temple until I eventually figure it out and once inside we find these three spinning rings and there's no gravity. I'm not sure what to do until these sparkling lights appear and after floating into the lights a whole bunch of times I have another vision and pass out and I awake to find that I've been given a power that lets me control gravity. 
this is really akin to the shout system from Skyrim, and I'm excited to see what awesome powers we get moving forward. But for now, I return to the lodge and show off my new power to the constellation members who are a mix of amazed and fearful. And with that, I only have one mission left out of the one Sarah gave me, so I go start it by speaking with Sam Co. He's a space cowboy and happens to be the expert of Freestar Collective Space among Constellation, and he's in the lodge with his daughter Cora, and after speaking Speaking with him, I find out I'm going to the capital city of the Freestar Collective, known as Aquila. Apparently, Ko has some information on another possible artifact location. I also talk to his daughter for a little bit, who is going to be coming along with us. I then go to the weapons shop here in New Atlantis, and after I buy some ammo and supplies, Sarah wants to speak with me. She is worried about my new powers and what they're doing to me. I assure her I'm fine before heading to my ship to depart with Sam and his daughter. When we arrive in Aquila City, we are greeted with the scene of a bank robbery gone wrong as the town's marshal is outside the bank negotiating with the robbers through an intercom. I offer my skills to solve the situation, and he allows me to because I'm with Sam. In a convenient turn of fate, Sam and I need into this bank's vault to find some maps anyways, so this is kind of a two birds with one stone situation. Either way, I walk up to the intercom, and after a lot of talking, I manage to convince the leader of the heist to give himself up to avoid a harsher jail sentence. I then speak with the marshal, letting him know I've solved the problem, and he says I should become a Freestar Ranger, and honestly, that sounds pretty fun, and I'm hoping to get a gun that I can use out of it because what's a ranger without a big iron? Either way, I go speak with this ranger lady who says I need to prove myself to become a ranger by taking on one of the ranger missions from this little bounty kiosk, so I head over to the kiosk and take up a mission to kill off a bandit leader. I head out to their headquarters, where I'm greeted with a bunch of bullets and lasers from the pirates and their robots. At first, I try and fight my way through them to their nefarious leader, but just end up six feet under because they are way higher level than me and very numerous. On my second attempt, I take advantage of the low gravity of the moon we're on and jump to the top floor and then just unload a ton of ammo into the pirate leader while eating an eight-course meal in order to bring him down before making my daring escape back to my ship before taking off and returning to Aquila. Once back in Aquila, I head over to the weapon shop where I buy a bunch of new guns that are way better than most of what I was using. I then report to the ranger lady who takes me to the marshal to be deputized. He gives us some snazzy clothes and makes us take an oath to protect people or something, but most importantly, he gives us Deadeye, a big old revolver that does a ton of damage. <coughs> Sorry, my uh, revolver voice kicked in there for a second. I fixed it. Where were we? Oh, right. I get told by the marshal to go check on a farm that's reporting some trouble with thugs. I head out to the farm with Sam and the ranger lady to speak with the woman running the farm. She says a bunch of ruffians offered to buy the farm at a lowball price and then threatened to take the farm by force before running into the nearby canyons. I start tracking the ruffians and run into sunflower spiders. Great. I love this. This is great. I blow through a stupid amount of ammo fighting through them, but overall, they aren't a big threat. We then encounter these massive grub-like monsters, and they are scary as hell to look at, but just like the spiders, they go down just as easily. We breeze through the local wildlife and confront the ruffian leader, who quickly gets hostile with me. I then end up dying to him and his gang a few times, as they can eat a lot of damage and deal quite a bit right back to me. At this point, I had already already run out of healing supplies, so I just have to slog through it. Eventually, I manage to avoid enough damage and deal enough with the help of my follower and the ranger lady to kill off their leader and start investigating why they want the farm so bad, and all I find is this note after spending way too long blowing up sand for the fun of it and being confused. I then read the note, and it talks about a ship being stolen from some company named Hope Tech. I then give it to the ranger lady and we return to the farm owner and inform her that the ruffians are dealt with and that her farm is safe before heading back to Aquila and reporting to the marshal who tasks me with finding the ship thief to figure out why they needed to steal the ship in the first place. I plan to finish this quest line, but first I want to get back to the main story. So ignoring the ship theft for now, I instead make my way over to the bank here in Aquila with Sam to look for some maps that should point us towards another artifact. I search for a while, but all I find 
find is sadness and a note from Sam's dad saying he stole the maps. I give the note to Sam, who reveals that he has daddy issues, and considering I was a hostage negotiator just a few hours ago, I'm sure I can tackle Sam's family drama. So I take him over to his dad's house and let them bicker and argue for a while before convincing Sam to let me try and persuade his dad. I then talk to the dad and manage to persuade him by saying it's the fastest way to get rid of us, and he agrees. I then take the maps and steal from him before heading out of the house and speaking with Sam. He's not excited about the location of the artifact as it's currently in the middle of the wilderness surrounded by deadly wildlife and controlled by the gang that was robbing the bank earlier. Completely unfazed by this, I make my way out there and my first attempt goes incredibly poorly as I end up dying to the first few bandits there. On my second attempt, I take things slower and focus on picking off the bandits one at a time from range until I've thinned their numbers enough to go from building to building and cover to cover while unloading all kinds of pistols into them. They put up a decent fight, but aren't really much of a match for me as I enter the caves and kill off the last of the bandits before obtaining another artifact while having a vision. As I go to exit the cave, we are confronted by the leader of the gang known as Shaw. After a long conversation, I manage to persuade her into letting us go, and as I'm leaving, the camp is attacked by wild animals. I help her and her lackeys fin them off, and it's not too difficult before heading back to my ship and returning to the lodge to add another artifact to the ever-growing pile. I then speak with Walter, the old rich guy, and he tells me that we're going to a city called Neon to do a shady deal with someone who has an artifact. When we arrive, we go to the offices of the company him and his business partner Issa run. They start flirting in a threatening business speak way with each other, and I'm quite confused until they mention being married near the end. After a long conversation, they tell me to go do some errands, which involve finding out what the security at the club is like and hacking some computers. Honestly, just your standard shady business setup stuff. Eventually, I knock out all these tasks and go speak with Walter again, who says, let's go meet the client. I enter the club with Walter, and I have to find the seller by looking for a man with a massive briefcase. Once I find him, I give him the code phrase that Walter gave me, and he tells me to meet him in one of the VIP suites. I tell Walter, and then we head up to meet the man, and he asks me to sit down. I agree to do so, and while they are talking, the seller tries to rip us off. I then close and lock the door to the room remotely using the computer we hacked earlier, and that scares the seller into taking the original offered amount. I go to exit the room with artifact in hand when a man points a gun at us and demands we turn over the artifact that our seller stole from his employer, Slayton Aerospace. I try and persuade the gunman not to die over a hunk of metal, but he refuses and in turn gets absolutely murdered by my large array of pistols before we head off to exit the club, where Walter's wife Issa informs us that my ship has been impounded and a bounty has been placed on our heads. Walter then says we should go to the offices of Slayton Aerospace and try and have a meeting with the CEO. I try and make a meeting with him at the front desk with his secretary, but that just doesn't work because I'm just not very persuasive today, apparently. Moving on to plan B, I steal a VIP card and attempt to ride the elevator up to his office when suddenly it stops and the CEO comes over the intercom to monologue about how amazing he is and how we just messed up and he knows what we're doing and he's gonna kill us. Then, all of a sudden, Issa hijacks the controls and starts guiding us through the building. It's a really cool section where we play red light green light while she gives directions and unlocks doors for us. I even end up getting scared because she mentions a robot and I thought this little trash robot was gonna blow my cover, but in the end, after climbing through many vents and sneaking through some rooms, we make our way onto the roof of the building where I have to fight through some of Slayton's security forces. They are quite honestly pushovers, dying in one to two shots from my pistols, so I breeze through it before making my way with Walter into the CEO's office, where after some tense negotiations, it's decided that Slayton's company and Walter's company will work together, and in return, we get to keep the artifact. Oh, we also have to decide what happens to the thief, and holy crap, how is he talking to me? That is so much blood on the ground, and he looks fine. What in the hell? Either way, I send the man with more blood than common sense to jail before exiting the building and making my way back to my ship. I then take off from Neon and get into orbit when a strange looking ship comes out from nowhere and hails me. It's named the Helix and the voice hailing me is so condescending as they speak down to me treating all of Constellation like children playing with fire. 
eventually demanding I hand over all the artifacts. The voice identifies itself as something called a Starborn and refuses to answer any questions I ask it about the artifacts or who they are. So I tell Walter to fire up the grab drive while I distract the Starborn until I can jump safely away from them. I then make my way over to the lodge and after a large group meeting, it's decided that we need to learn all we can about both the artifacts and the Starborn. So for now, we're just going to continue hunting the artifacts, so I speak with Vladimir to get more leads on where they're located. But before we jump into another artifact quest, I want to change gears and continue the ranger storyline from earlier. So I make my way out to meet up with the ranger near Hopetown, and when I arrive in orbit, there's a distress call coming from her ship. We board and find her wounded, and she tells us about some outlaws that she was hunting and asks us to fix her ship. I run around hitting switches and knobs until it's fixed and then speak with her again. She tells me where the outlaws jumped to, and I give chase. The fight with them is really rough. The Frontier is a great ship and all, but it's very fragile and taking on multiple opponents is an issue. I end up dying a few times and this makes me think I should save up some credits and get myself a good combat ship since I'm not limited as far as space combat goes. Either way, I eventually fell these three outlaws before heading over to Hopetown where I proceed to speak with the ranger lady before meeting the CEO of Hopetech. His voice actor is really enthusiastic and weirdly kind of polite but in a threatening way. I'm sure I don't need to remind you of my position on the Council of Governors. In the end, the conversation reveals that I need to head out to Neon City again to find out who stole the ship that the ruffians they were using while threatening the farm earlier. I head over to Neon City and annoy the ranger there by being idealistic before going to meet up with a shipyard worker who knows about the ship theft. When I speak with him, he refuses to give me the information until I deal with a loan shark that's pinning his dead brother's debt on him. So I head over to the loan shark's place and I persuade the guard outside to give me the key to enter the building and when I make my way inside I try and persuade the shark to just drop the debt but he refuses so I proceed to murder him and his entire crew while barely breaking a sweat. He really should have listened to me but oh well. I then go speak with the shipyard worker again who tells me that the thief is a woman blowing money over at a local bar. I talk to her for a while before throwing my ranger badges weight at her by letting her know she could have been charged with aiding and abetting a murder if the ruffians had killed the farmer. In response to this, she tells me about a woman who is deathly ill that gave her the job, as well as a reclusive smuggler named Marco who knows about the ruffians which she reveals to be a group called the First Cavalry. She also gave me an encrypted slate from the First Cavalry, and after that I leave Neon and make my way back to Aquila City where I go to the Rock and give a nerdy ranger named Alex the encrypted slate so he can try and decrypt it. I also report to the marshal, letting him know what I've learned, and he gives me a couple of places to start looking for Marco as well as the sick woman. I start off by trying to track down the sick woman, and to do so I head over to the clinic, which is the best space station hospital in the frontier. I meet with the rangers stationed there and speak with some of the staff members until I gain access to the VIP section of the hospital where I find that the hospital's security system has killed a doctor and the room that the woman is supposed to be in is booby trapped. After navigating the traps so swiftly by blowing them up in my face, I find a note that tells me she went to an abandoned asteroid mine and with that I go to leave and on my way out I try and tell pretty much anyone really about the dead doctor. Nobody really has any dialogue about this and I guess my character just doesn't care, so good writing Bethesda. Since reporting a murder doesn't seem all that important, I decide to commit a crime myself. I try and steal this adorable plushie from the ranger's office because I'm just too tempted and end up getting caught and thrown in the Hopetown jail for stealing. It's here where I start to think maybe I'm not suited for working as a law enforcer. Either way, I make my way out of jail and to the asteroid mine where the combat is rough. I have to fight through these large insects called shard hoppers, which isn't too bad, but then I encounter a ton of robots. They are really hard to take down and deal decent damage to me. I have to take cover and pop out only to take a few shots at them before hiding again, making this trip through the mine a slow and painful slog, and on top of all of that, there are traps everywhere, so I have to always be careful. 
I end up dying in the last room of the dungeon before trying again, and with great struggle, as well as most of my ammo being depleted, I managed to brute force my way through all of these infernal machines in order to confront the deathly ill woman. Well, it turns out that she isn't really in a talking mood and starts to shoot at me immediately. So I'm forced to use my vast array of handguns to kill her robot and pacify her before speaking with her. She gives me another encrypted slate to help me break the encryption, and since she's gonna die anyways, I just leave her here to die slowly on her own terms instead of taking her out or arresting her. With that, I take the encrypted slate over to Alex before making my way to a very high gravity ice planet that is home to some place called the Red Mile. I enter and join up with another ranger who is trying to bring down Marco's smuggling ring and we speak with a competing smuggler. The smuggler tells me that the only way to get a meeting with Marco is to go through a woman named May Divine who runs the Red Mile. The Red Mile turns out to be some kind of blood sport where people have to run a mile and activate a beacon before returning, all without dying to the extremely deadly local wildlife or cold. Well, it turns out the only way to get a favor from her is is running the Red Mile, so I go talk to her and agree to run it. I was worried this would be super difficult, as Bethesda has made a pretty grueling gauntlet like this before in Nuka World, but overall, it was easy. I only kill one of the beasts before realizing I can just outrun all of them. I run over to the beacon and activate it before running back and telling May that her Red Mile was a cakewalk. I then go speak with the ranger who fawns over me, calling me so brave before speaking with May again, who tells me where to meet with Marco. I head over to Marco's hideout, which is like a supervillain's lair, and try to convince him to help me shut down the first. He wants me to let him operate without ranger interference, and I say no, which leads to a fight. I kill him quickly and start slogging my way through all of his men until I find out that I can turn their automated turrets against them, which is pretty awesome. Despite this though, there are some strategies and through taking the fight slowly and dealing with the thugs one at a time, I managed to clear the lair relatively unscathed before making my way out to my ship. It's here where Sarah wishes to speak with me again, and all of these conversations have been leading up to a companion quest. She wants me to go with her to Cassiopeia 3 to find the escape shuttle where the crew of her old UC ship died. But before we can do so, we need to go speak to an admiral so we can find the exact location of where she crash landed on the planet. I agree to do so, but before that, I make my way back to the rock and give the last encrypted slate that we got from Marco's corpse to Alex the Nerdy Ranger. I then go and sit down with the marshal and ranger lady from earlier to get evaluated on how I've been doing so far. I get a bunch of praise from my superiors, and then Alex comes into the meeting ranting and raving about a factory related to the first. The marshal lets me know about an old mech factory that was used during the war, and that the first might be using it as a headquarters, and if they are, I should be prepared for combat when I head out there. I'm pretty sure I have a good arsenal of pistols, so I'm not too worried about the combat as I jump to the system where I can find the factory, only to be ambushed by a bunch of first cavalry ships and, uh, uh, die. Well, so much for my confidence. I give it a few more tries just to see if it's possible before coming to the conclusion that I need a better ship. So I decide to do the Mantis side quest as I've heard it gives a lot of upgrades including a new ship. I jump off to this secret outpost and find a bunch of scavengers here. I start fighting my way through them with little issue at first. The combat alternates between slow drawn out fights where I whittle down the scavengers numbers and close in fast brawls when there's only one or two of them left. I'm doing quite well and clear the last room with scavengers before I end up dying to a puzzle room with absolutely deadly turrets inside it. I go at the dungeon again, but get impatient and end up dying to a group of scavengers before even reaching the puzzle. But the old saying holds true, and third time is indeed the charm, as I clear out all of the scavengers, except for one who turned out to be friendly that I ended up killing on my first attempt. Either way, he tells me that the puzzle ahead requires me to use these buttons on the ground to form a specific word. Each button is labeled with a random letter, and I end up dying.
dying a bunch of times before realizing that the audio tapes I found throughout this dungeon are the key to this puzzle, which lets me solve it quickly. The scavenger I left alive tries to betray me, but ends up dying for it before I end up dying to a bunch of robots in the final room. I go at it again and take it extremely slowly, trying to isolate each robot and take them on one on one, and this works out well as I kill the last of the robots, sending one of them flying before getting myself a brand new spaceship. I also get a set of legendary armor that looks absolutely horrible, but it is amazing stats wise. Oh, the pain that is an RPG. The cool armor is trash, and this bobblehead outfit is amazing. Either way, I check out my new ship and head off to use it against those first cavalry ships and, uh, die. Well then. I decide to go upgrade the Razor Leaf, which is our new ship, at the Aquila Shipyard, and after some minor weapon alterations, I take on the first fleet again, and this time it goes alright. I easily kill the first wave of ships before valiantly retreating back to Aquila to repair up. I then go back to take on the second and third wave of ships, only to die once more. But on my third and last attempt, I managed to just barely get the best of the final four ships before landing at the mech factory. I enter and start taking on what feels like all of the first cavalry, and surprisingly, it isn't that hard. Sure, the enemies are really tanky and take a lot of shots, and there are a lot of them. They also do decent damage to me, but despite all of that, I managed to fight my way through all of them without dying even once. I dash from cover to cover until I'm close enough to accurately hit them, and I never end up taking on more than two at one time, because while there are a ton of them in these rooms, the rooms themselves are massive and that makes singling out enemies very easy. I eventually reach the final room, and slowly but surely clear out all of the enemies inside, including their leader Paxton, who falls to his knees wounded until I kill the rest of his lackeys. I then speak with Paxton, who tells me he was hired by Ron Hope, the CEO of Hope Tech from earlier, in order to steal land from farmers. I then have to fight Paxton again, which isn't too hard, before going off to Hope Town to confront Ronnie. After a really long conversation, we find out that Ron wants the farms because he gave them this super fertilizer that ended up killing all the plants but making the soil mineral rich, and now he needs to get the farms back to make a profit by selling the mineral rich land. He then tries to bribe me to turn a blind eye to his nefarious actions, and I tell him no, and in response he gets very hostile with me, so I have to kill him and his guards before talking to one of his employees, who is freaking out. I then return to the rock in Aquila City, where I tell the marshal what happened, and he promotes us to a full-fledged ranger, and gives us yet another new ship. I go to check out my ship and upgrade it before heading over to the lodge where I speak with Vladimir to find out that he has a house in the Outer Fringe. I then head to his house and end up fighting a Crimson Fleet ship in orbit, which wasn't too difficult, before I end up landing and looking around Vlad's house. Inside a locked room, I find the Mutineer, which is a decked out magshot pistol that does quadruple the damage of any gun I have right now. It's fully automatic and is most likely likely going to be my go-to pistol for a long time. From there, I make my way out to a science outpost that seems to be overrun with pirates. I fight my way through the pirates, and holy crap, the mutineer is just so broken. I take up the strategy of using it like a shotgun because the recoil is insane, but it does one clip most if not all of the enemies I encounter as I delve into a cave underneath the outpost and fight another star born in order to obtain the next artifact. I then decide to go get a new power from one of these temples, so I head off to the temple on Kendi, where I do the little ring and light puzzle thing again, and this time when I finish up and get teleported out of the temple, I'm met with an invisible starborn who starts kicking my ass. It's a close fight, but in the end I end up putting him six feet in the ground with my arsenal of one-handed doom before making my way back to the lodge and adding the 
the artifacts I found to the collection before having a conversation about whether or not we should continue collecting the artifacts with this religious token character that Bethesda added to Constellation. Either way, I keep on plowing ahead, moral quandaries aside, and next up we speak with Vladimir and he says I need to go help him repair the eye, but um, I can't do this quest because I'm on a companion quest? Ah, crap. I forgot that I need to go meet an admiral and find Sarah's old crewmates on Cassiopeia. Well, I head off and speak with the admiral, who at first is kind of a douche canoe, but eventually softens up and helps us by sending us the info we need before we jump over to Cassiopeia and fight through a whole bunch of wildlife until we find a settlement that Sarah's crew seems to have built after crash landing. Upon entering the main structure of the settlement, we find a young girl named Sona, and you cannot convince me that this isn't a League of Legends reference now. We're on planet Cassiopeia, and we have found Sona. This is a League of Legends reference. I don't care what you say. Either way, moving on, wouldn't you believe it? Sona is the child of two of Sarah's crewmates. We then find out that the gene tags of all the crew are over in a graveyard nearby that's infested with monsters. I head over and grab the gene tags while killing a dinosaur or two with little to no issue because get this, guns kill animals pretty damned well. I return to Sarah and Sona with the gene tags and then convince Sona to come along with us to the lodge. I think the quest is done when we speak to Sona in the lodge, but no, it wants to waste more of my time. Sarah wants me to take her to a war memorial, so I do that and we talk. Honestly, I didn't want to do this quest to begin with, so I haven't been listening, but apparently now we need to go to a waterfall, so I head off and do that, and the conversation ends with Sarah and I becoming best friends before I return to the lodge and speak with Vlad again, who tells me to meet him up on the eye to help repair it. I go up and end up breaking stuff instead of fixing it, so Vlad sends me off with Barrett to steal an artifact from some Russian collector named Petra. I jump out to the collector's ship and manage to persuade my way on board and then persuade the collector himself to show us his private collection. I then steal the artifact from him and shoot him till he falls, at which point he lets me leave the ship without fighting his goons. On my way back to the lodge, I get arrested by the vanguard and this is just a setup for a side quest, so I'm not gonna mention any more about it. After dealing with the vanguard, I then make my way back to the lodge and add the artifact to the collector collection only to find out the eye isn't responding and something's wrong. We are then contacted by a starborn named the Hunter who is coming to the lodge to get the artifacts by force. I decide to head over to the eye and save the constellation members on it because I think that Barrett can handle himself. After speaking with all of the members on the eye and saving them, I then head back to the lodge and a very clean Barrett is surrounded by an ungodly amount of blood. Unlike the guy in Neon though, he is dead, but despite this sad moment, I need to talk to the other people in the lodge who tell me to go to the basement and find Noel, who had run away with all the artifacts. I head down to the basement and enter the sewer there where I find Noel, only for the hunter to come out of nowhere and start attacking us. I realize pretty quickly that you can't win this fight. So I have to run to my ship and continue to unload bullets into the hunter until we reach it and take off. Once in orbit, the hunter's ship appears and hails me to give me some loot for beating him and to tell me to keep collecting the artifacts. He also says that I should be proud of myself for besting him since it happened so rarely. Okay then, that was strange. I was really expecting some ship combat here, but... Oh well. I then go to the eye and speak with Vlad and Noel, and it's decided that I should keep the artifacts on my ship to keep them safe. I then head back down to the lodge, and hot damn, they cleaned up that blood quick. Either way, earlier when the hunter contacted us before the attack, he mentioned something called the Unity. After speaking with the constellation members here in the lodge, it's revealed that a local religious figure named Keeper Aquilus was preaching about something called the Unity. I decide to go speak with him about it, and he takes us into his office to tell us a story. The story is about a Unity pilgrim, and how he gave part of the truth of the universe to the House of the Enlightened, while giving the other part of the truth to the Varun Zealots. 
Luckily, just by coincidence, there's someone to talk to from both the Varun Zealots and the House of the Enlightened here in New Atlantis. The Enlightened are running a mission in the shady part of New Atlantis, so I head over there first to speak with one of their members. He goes on and on about the number two, and I decide that's all I really need to know before heading to the jail where I can speak with a Varun Zealot who was arrested. The Zealot goes on and on about the numbers four and 120, and I am thoroughly confused. I then head back to the preacher man who takes all of this nonsense and says I need to go to the second planet in some weird system and use the numbers the Varun gave me as coordinates to land and find the pilgrim's resting place. This seems really convoluted but I head off to the planet and who would have guessed it? This is called Pilgrim's Rest and after answering some questions on a computer I'm given access to his bedroom where I find a journal that tells me of some holy site or something. Honestly the story story is kind of not capturing me and my ADHD attention span is shot at this point so I have no idea what's going on, but I make my way to the quest marker and spend a solid 10 to 15 minutes trying to solve this puzzle only to find out I actually solved it in the first 20 seconds and didn't notice the pop-up telling me I had. This puzzle apparently told me to go to some star system and when I do I find a starborn ship and start speaking with the hunter. He is joined by another starborn named the Emissary and they invite me on board their ship while ensuring my safety. I board their ship and they explain that the artifacts are the key to becoming Starborn and that it allows them to travel between the multiverse and holy crap the emissary is Barrett and the hunter is Kiefer Aquilus. Okay, you have my attention again. They both try to convince me to choose to work with one or the other and they also want me to go to Earth's moon to find an artifact before deciding. Oh also, the emissary is a high and mighty kind of figure who thinks that the artifacts should be controlled and people shouldn't have them, while the hunter believes in meritocracy, saying that anyone strong enough to collect all of them deserves to become a starborn. On a side note, the hunter also looks way cooler and constantly drops hot facts against the emissary, calling him a hypocrite for taking artifacts by force and then claiming no one else should be able to do so. Either way, I return to the lodge and tell the other members of Constellation about what happened before Noel tells me of a memorial being held for Barry. I then go to sleep and wake up to attend the memorial. After giving a few kind words and speaking with most of the guests, I decide to leave the memorial and make my way over to Earth's moon, where I land at a secret NASA laboratory to find out that an artifact was used to create the first ever grav drive. I also learn that I need to head down to NASA's JFK launch site in order to get the artifact for myself. Off to Florida I go, and immediately upon landing, my immersion is completely destroyed. There's a decently preserved launch tower with a spacecraft attached to it, which is perfectly fine, but the entire area around it is not. Everywhere else surrounding this area is just an absolute desolate wasteland, but this structure is fine? It's really silly to me, but moving on, I managed to fail at parkouring on my first attempt to scale the launch tower before trying again and making my way inside the launch tower to find a NASA museum, which was really cool to see before delving deeper into the complex where I find some robots and turrets that I quickly dispatch with ease. I end up continuing through the complex constantly having to turn power on for doors until I reach this area where there's no gravity. The puzzle here is really complex for me at least, and I take a long time confused on where to go, but eventually I find a log that explains that the inventor of the grav drive found the first artifact, and a starborn came to tell him that the grav drives will destroy the Earth's gravity and that he will become a starborn. Apparently the starborn also taught him how to create the grav drive, and he does so using the first artifact. I I then turn the gravity back on and grab the artifact when suddenly a bunch of starborns start attacking me. They aren't really that scary as the mutineer pistol can kill them in one reload so I make my way out of the launch tower fighting through all the starborn without too much trouble before meeting with the hunter and emissary again. After a long conversation with the two I decide to side with the hunter since he is spitting hot facts about the emissary and does want to see me become a starborn. He then orders me to assassinate him? 
Well, the him that is Keeper Aquilus. So I head over to New Atlantis and upgrade my ship's grab drive before making my way over to the temple to talk with Aquilus. After a long conversation where he reveals that he knows he's a Starborn, I decide to pull out one of my mini pistols of doom and destruction and blow him away. I then leave New Atlantis and make my way out to this random star system and help the hunter fight another Starborn ship before boarding his ship and reporting that Aquilus is dead. He then tells me to head off and get more artifacts, so I head off to a moon base that is identical to the Varun one we got an artifact from before. I fight through a bunch of spacers this time, along with a Starborn in order to get an artifact from the caves below it. I then jump to another star system where the eye found an artifact and get a distress signal from a satellite. It tells me of an explosion in the high velocity lab on planet and is asking for assistance. I land on the planet and approach this building where the security guard allows me to enter and while he is leading me to the director, I go on a strange trip where all of a sudden I'm in a destroyed version of the building and fighting these weird scorpions. I then come back to reality and the guard is confused saying I disappeared and reappeared randomly. I continue following him and occasionally get thrust into this alternate version of the building where I find a man named Raphael who says that the security guy is dead and that he is the sole survivor of an experiment gone wrong. I then get pulled back to the original version of the outpost and speak with the director who tells me of an accident where Raphael died and it's revealed that I'm being ping-ponged between two different universes and this is all leading up to the fact that this dungeon is Bethesda does attempt at a Titanfall 2 style time travel mission, but with the multiverse instead. This dungeon was extremely long and involved a lot of combat that was actually kind of difficult, but nevertheless, I kind of blow through all the enemies in my path, and I haven't done a carnage montage in this run yet, so here you go. Alright, so a quick summary of what happened during this quest. For starters, I had to go to the destroyed universe in order to reach a science lab because the building in the non-destroyed universe is on lockdown. And the reason that I'm randomly jumping between the two universes is that there is a probe that is feeding power to an artifact and creating a distortion between the universes. I have to go shut down that probe, but I have to choose which universe to make real. Whichever universe I turn off the probe in will become the real universe and the other one will become fake. At least, that's how it was explained, but it doesn't really make a lot of sense to me. So I make my way through all of the enemies, hopping back and forth between the universes to solve the puzzle and honestly, this dungeon is just a really bad version of that Titanfall 2 mission I mentioned earlier. Either way, I decide to turn off the probe in the universe where Raphael died since it would save more people, and they rewarded me with a really good set of armor. I then go around the major cities such as New Atlantis and Aquila to restock, and I really quickly wanted to show you my arsenal. I'm going to scroll through the weapons here, and honestly, my biggest takeaway is that you should get the Mutineer if you like pistols. It is so incredibly 
powerful, and the ammo for it is sold all over the place. While buying ammo, I also picked up a heavily modded Kraken that isn't shown here, but it's time to head out to the Masada system to make our way into the Buried Temple. Once in orbit, I'm confronted by the Helix and a couple of other Starborn ships helping the Emissary. The combat isn't really difficult in space due to our decked out ship, and we quickly fell the ships before landing on the planet. Also, in this section for some reason, the footage started to drop in frame rate, so it may look a little bit jank and I'm sorry about that. Either way, the fighting on the planet is really rough. I'm blowing through a ton of ammo very quickly and all of these enemies are taking chunks out of my health. I'm fighting my way through a ton of Starborn that are helping the Emissary, and they are using their Starborn powers and all have little gimmicks to make the fighting harder. The first group of Starborn I fight outside are rough. It's here where I learn how frustrating fighting Starborn can be as they continuously teleport away when I deal enough damage and overall are using decent weaponry on top of their Starborn powers. After clearing them, I make my way into this high-tech fortress built by mercenaries, and the first couple of rooms inside are slow but steady, as the Starborn teleport away from me over and over, and I keep having to run them down and dump an entire magazine into them before chasing them again. They're also using some mercenaries that we fought in the early game to help them out, but they are honestly pushovers at this stage of the game. The combat is cyclical, with me entering a new arena-style room before being forced to kill the Starborn inside to progress. Some are using robots to try and stop me, while others are holding key cards that stop my progress. Eventually I run into a bunch of sparkling lights which take me to a different universe where I have to do things like fight Supervisor Lin and Heller in the mine from the beginning of the game. There's another one of these visions that involves me speaking with Petrov who is really judgmental all of a sudden. And overall, I actually find it really cool to go back and see scenes from earlier in the game and even end up fighting through people you didn't fight before. Anyways, I continue fighting through the Starborn and all of their tricks, taking them down one or two at a time as I slog my way towards the temple, which is buried underneath this base. The hunter has been helping me the entire time since I jumped into the Masada system, but he is kind of weak, so I have to do the heavy lifting until we reach an elevator and head down it, where I have another universe jump into an alternate universe where I die. I speak with Vlad as he holds my corpse and encourage him to keep looking for the artifacts before encountering this room with a Starborn that creates duplicates of himself. The fighting is incredibly difficult here, as I didn't realize I just have to kill the Starborn and ignore the duplicates, and I end up dying to this cheap trick, which sets me back quite a bit into the base. I go through the Starborn and Visions again, but this time when I reach the Vladimir Vision, well, I'll just show you the livestream reaction. Oh, let's look at the sparkles come through the floor. There they are. Guys, Vladimir's so tripping. No. Oh, no. no. <laughs> Bugthesta strikes again. Oh, oh, oh let, watch me shimmy. I'm a shimmy round. <laughs> oh, 
I'm very, very not dead, Vladimir. Uh, look, I'm Vladimir. Don't freak out. But hello. What the? Could it ghost? <laughs> what kind of cruelty is this? Is some starborn trick? Your Come friend isn't dead. They just have black play. eyes. They're a demon. After that calamity, I go to fight the duplicate Starborn again and end up killing him only to die to one of the Starborn abilities once more. Well, hopefully this time, like in so many of my other runs, third time is the charm. I take him on again and this time I just focus on rushing him down and taking him out and it really works out, but I do lose a lot of health before entering the temple. It's here where we confront the emissary once more and he begins fighting us. There are multiple emissaries here and they are really brutal to fight. Each version of the emissary has a ton of health and they use various starborn abilities we've seen throughout this dungeon. On top of that, we keep getting thrown into different set pieces from the rest of the game, which makes getting Getting my bearings on cover and where the enemies are that little bit harder, but eventually, after a long protracted battle of wills and extremely long health bars, I manage to fell the emissary and return to the temple to claim the last artifact. I then make my way back into my ship, add all of the artifacts to the amillery, and power up the grab drive which takes me to the unity. Once inside the unity, I speak with myself, which was weird, and after a really long monologue and an explanation of what will happen in my universe when I become starborn, I walk my way into this giant orb and become starborn while answering the question, can I beat Starfield very hard difficulty with only pistols? Yes, yes I can. Thank you so much for watching and if you enjoyed, please consider liking, subscribing, and commenting a new challenge suggestion. I'd like to thank my Patreons and channel members as their support has been tremendous. If you like this video, I think you'd like my follow out for as an Assaultron video linked on the right. You all are beautiful, and this is Willow signing off. I live inside my own world of make believe. Kids screaming in the cradles, profanities. I see the door through ice covered in ink and bleach. Cross out the ones who heard my cries and watched.